Now, as you can see, I've got a fairly detailed sketch of a bird up here. This is a 14 by 18 canvas. That's because I've got it turned vertically. It's easier to film that way. Uh, but I am going to be painting in oils. And let's just start off today here. I want to have this background coated with at least some amount of clear gel and white. I'm going to just go maybe right around and not paint the bird in. That's my thought. I don't know. You know, it's just, it's just something. Maybe get up here and even paint. I, I won't, um, I kind of wanted you to see this before I totally messed it up with a clear gel and white, but I'll see a little bit of my sketch still through there. Not that it really matters, just to indicate some branches. It's going to be a very interesting subject. I'm just going to brush in some background, very light, misty background tones. I don't, don't want much. I don't even know how far back I need to go. At least, at least a good ways up into these branches. Don't want much though. Just enough to tone that canvas. My brush was dirty anyways, the one that I used to coat, you know, the background. So that almost helps, you know, but as it is, I'm going to just try to get a little bit of color toned here in the canvas. Now this video is actually going to be available on Patreon in its entire form. It's going to be several hours in length. So if you're interested in seeing every brushstroke that it takes to create this painting, definitely uh, check out our link for Patreon down in the description below. And uh, you can call it good. You could start with an acrylic background, but I don't really think it's necessary for this. I like to have my soft edges. I want to work into that wet oil paint, if at all possible. That way, you know, if you had an acrylic background, this wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't get those soft edges and leave that dry. So it'd be fine. Before I go much further, I need to give a, a special thanks to our Patreon members. And if you're not a Patreon member, you should definitely consider joining because I've got some of the craziest, longest lessons that, uh, that I've ever made, you know, on Patreon. And, uh, you know, one painting and will take four or five hours to do it. And the other thing that we do, well, of course, the live streams every month, which is kind of fun. We do Q&As and also... We do, every once in a while, we'll do a critique where people will send in their paintings and I'll film a video telling you what I think about your painting and about how you can improve it. And so if it was only for that, I think it would be worth it. And we do those, not all the time, but we do them every once in a while. So definitely jump on Patreon and, uh, and check it out. It's worth, at least worth a one month, just to see if you like it, right? There you go. Now I've got this kind of a grayish green color mixed up and I think that'll be fine. Now I've got, you know, a fair amount of thick oil paint up here, but let me just start, let's just start right here. I'm going to place, and you can see I've tested several, several variations of this color. Anyway, I'm going to create little pine branches. Now, what will be interesting, because I've never actually done this, this, I don't think I've ever painted a pine branch this large, ever. So you're doing this with me the first time ever. So I know I want them kind of blurry. I don't want them very sharp. That much I know. But other than that, I don't really know for sure how detailed or not detailed I want to go. And I know I want pockets of snow and I don't know if I even want to leave them open or not. You know, I, I could maybe come back with a shop towel and just wipe it and get my pockets of snow. That might be the best way to, to go about this. So this is very much experimental. So if you see things changing around a lot, it's because I don't know what I'm doing. and I'm, I'm just learning. So it should give you at least a little bit of hope. <laughs> there we go. Let me see right back here behind this bird by the way i mean can you can you think of a more christmas time painting than this i don't think i can this is very very classic looking and, and you know christmas card is definitely the style that's going on here now I'll take maybe a little bit of burnt umber some red some yellow ochre some of our hunza yellow maybe just trying to get a color that'll work for my shadows. And of course this is dry, this area is totally dry. And I'm going to just underpaint my little bird. And it may take a little bit of, a little bit of effort to get it underpainted, but it'll be worth it. Now, some of this green and whatnot will mix with my bird, but red and, red and green together just make that, make a bit of a brown, it's no big deal. And especially down in here, I kind of want it in shadow, so the brown is gonna be fine. You could even put some green in your bird later on to kind of help balance it out and tie it into the painting, which definitely would work, you know. I'm probably going to do that. Take some more red. And just, you know, our light's coming in from this way. So the back of the bird's what's going to be highlighted. The front of the bird, not so much. We just need to keep that in mind as we're going. You may want to sit down and actually figure out what a cardinal looks like, you know, as you do this. Because it is, uh, it is important that you get the shapes correct. And I'm no wildlife painter, and you know that. And so you're going to have, you're going to have a little patience with me, right? Yeah. It's, I'm gonna do my best. How's that? I'm gonna do my best. Let me go right here and just 
maybe get a little bit more yellow. I don't want a lot of thick, heavy paint. I gotta wipe some of that off. I want just enough to stain the canvas and I'll probably wipe some of that off, but potentially I may not, we'll see. But I'm just gonna work in my highlight and shadow side. I don't wanna do this just one dead color. I definitely wanna see highlights and shadows, you know, within this area. I mean, the whole painting is basically this bird. So we'll spend a lot of time dialing it in, making it just right. But I'm not going to use a lot of pure color. I'm going to, you know, have darker reds and oranges, not just a lot of red, you know, right out of the tube, if you know what I mean. Now I'm going to take just some black on the detail brush and I'm going to carefully come in here and just paint in the dark area of the, of the little cardinal. Of course, I've got to kind of put my beak back in. I've lost it because of the background, but that's all right. I'm just at this point, kind of a paint by numbers, just getting it filled in. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can actually take your red and go around this, you know, and kind of clean it up and fix it. It's pretty forgiving. And as far as the background goes, you know, I'm okay if I have to take some of the background color and pull it into the bird. If I make, you know, to make changes or make a mistake, that'll be okay. I can use the background color like an eraser. And I don't care if some of my bird color does get up into the background. Because that'll help to just tie everything together. It's a painting. It's not a photograph. And it's okay to have that that way. I'm going to take this orangey color, which is a little Hansa yellow here. That's all that that takes really to get that orangey color for the, for the beak. And... I'm going to just carefully, because I don't really have my drawing here, carefully kind of work that in. There's the bottom of the beak. Maybe I want that even more red. I don't know. I, what I need to do is I need, need to actually go and look at some photos of some cardinals, which I'll do. Make sure that I got the beak color correct. That actually looks, that reads like a cardinal, the shape of the beak. I, I think that's about right. I really do. Um, let me take just a little bit of black here. And, uh, you know, before I do black, let me get just a little bit of maybe some blue, blue and red, perhaps this brush may be too dirty. Let's see. No, I just want a gray, kind of a blue and red and make a gray, blue gray. And with that, I'm going to go just right in this eyeball. Really need to stop and get a, a different, this detail round brush is so beat up. Get me a, a, a new one, but I'll just go in and Paint some of the details here, the eye. Now it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and wipe away a lot of this extra paint on here. Just get off as much as possible without damaging the exterior. I just mainly focus here in the middle, you know, because all this paint's not, not gonna do us a bit of good, you know, being up on here. We need to get it off. We need to get it off. That's what we'll do. And see that, now how much you get off is, is up to you. I'm gonna try to get quite a bit because that's just the way, that's the style I paint. You know, I'm sure there's some wildlife artist here that, that knows what they're doing that's cringing. Like, what are you doing? That's not, well, I don't know. This is the way I paint. <laughs> this, is, this works for a tree, so it'll probably work for a bird. The idea is I'm reducing that amount of paint so that I can put in old details and stuff. Now, I may not need to do that so much in the shadows, but I believe it's very necessary here in the highlights. As you can see my roll of shop towels. So you could use a cotton rag. Just don't use a paper towel because you get those lint fibers all throughout the painting and they're very hard to pick out of the paint. I'm gonna go a little, little longer with that tail. You can see this little spot where I've been putting my finger and that's okay. I'll just blend it when I'm finished, but I'm going to and just continue to highlight. You can see I've been building up some mid-tones here, just slowly. None of this process is quick by any stretch, but I just, I don't know, I feel like it would be nice to go ahead and get a little bit of, get a little bit of brighter highlight going in here. I think that's very pretty. Of course, you know, you, you do want to eventually get back in. I'm using yellows here, but you eventually want to get back into your reds pinks. I don't want to remain here too much in the yellow because the, the cardinal is not yellow. <laughs> it's red. But the, the highlight, you know, the sun, it, it makes it look like the sun is really glistening off. And I think that's kind of pretty. Some white maybe just, now the, the white is a bit of a dirty white, so that just to pick up a dirty white. Got a little yellow in it. And what that allows me to do is it just gives me that last little oomph that I need that highlight to, to punch just enough so it's nice and bright 
And there you go. None of this is quick or loose. This is very tight compared to the, I mean, it's not necessarily a tight, like you don't, you, you can go more loose than this. Um, I don't know. There's a balance. There's for sure a balance when you're painting. Um, wildlife or anything like this or now I've got this dark purple mixed up here and I really feel like the purples you know are, are some of the most important part of the painting I'm going to add in our shadows here to this bird just like you would a tree stump <laughs> or anything else <laughs> don't know why that came to mind first but it did and uh, you know I just, I just really think these purples are not only nice but I think just totally necessary you got to have I've got to have them a little bit here's just some lighter purple and just a, you know you know <laughs> well, I, it's a bird so i gotta kind of be a little more maybe subtle than sometimes but i just want to integrate a little bit of this here and there not so people look at it and say wow you look at that in fact i'm going to tone that down this a little too much they won't say oh look at all that purple you put in your bird it just reflects the, the landscape around it wouldn't hurt to tell you the truth probably to get a little green in here green yeah I don't think it would hurt to get a little green, a little green in here. That's too much. Anywhere where I do too much, I'll take it out. You'll know it was too much because I took it out. I think less is more big time, big time when it comes to this today. Now I'm going to take a crumpled up shop towel here and I'd like to go ahead and get in some, um, I want some snow some way. I'm not totally sure that I figured this out yet, but we're going to figure it out together. I'm going to at least go ahead and open up some spots here where I can put snow. I mean, if you're brave enough to put snow right over that without wiping it off, that's fine. <laughs> I'm not. I'm going to be definitely, definitely wiping that off. There we go. And uh, you know what? I think this is going to help to seat this foliage down, you know, the foliage is kind of, kind of flat now. I think it's going to help to seed it down and give it some volume you know i don't know that it's critical to get all of this area wiped off but i'm gonna do my best to, to do a pretty good job i'm gonna spend a few minutes here on this even you can put your finger like that in the shop towel and then you can use it kind of like a pencil or you know just like a i don't know like finger painting just to remove the areas that you that you think you might want snow to lay up on those branches so there you go Pretty straightforward, just a matter of doing it and probably washing your hands afterward. <laughs> now I'm going to use some purple here just to indicate a few areas of shadow on these spots that I've wiped off with a shop towel. Now here you can see I'm just grabbing some just some purple. I cleaned, took a moment to clean my palette off. I just didn't want any of these greens and browns to end up in my snow. I, you know, I spent all this time trying to wipe it off. I don't want to cause any major, major areas. This looks pretty good. Remember our lighting, of course, is coming like this. So the underside is, is what's going to be shadow. The top kind of side is going to be what is in highlight. We'll stick pretty closely to that because that's, you know, how it's all going to look correct. I see some right here. See it? A little blob. Almost missed it, but it's right there. You know, you, because they're kind of hard to see. You could wipe an area out like right here and barely notice that you wiped it and kind of forget to, to do it, which probably wouldn't hurt anything. But there you go. When you do go into the green, it's important to stop and wipe your brush out and reload it. You know, wipe it on the on the palette, reload it, and that way you won't get mud. And it's okay to go ahead and get just a little bit of shadow up in these highlight areas. Of course, the highlight is done last because the shadow eats up the highlight so easily. That's the way I like to do it, at least, in, in stuff like this. It's typically you do dark to light, but so much of the time it's easier to work light to dark. I think the watercolor artists are onto something. <laughs> oh, no. There we go. A little more red. See some pink. So you don't want it all, at least I don't want it all flat, dead color. Plus that red having a little bit more on the pink side is safer for painting in. It's safer for painting in next to the green. To me, at least it is there. Now I'm going to take some white and just begin to apply a little bit of white here to the top. I don't need much. You know, I do want to retain some of this softness but I, I like that uh, really i do like what's going on here it's kind of pretty actually wouldn't there be a bit of shadow think about that right so i don't know that i want to do too much there there would be some here 
because the bird would be casting a shadow. Should finish my sentence in case, in case you weren't able, to, you know, to, to know what I was thinking. There we go. But yeah, I, I believe that's right. I'm cool with it mixing. You know, I put it, I put the bright stuff down where I know I want the bright stuff, and then I'm totally happy with the rest of this just kind of mixing and becoming darker. Not green, obviously, but even a little green toward the end will be fine. It just helps to tie it in with the background a bit you know i'm totally cool with that boom i don't want much just enough just totally just enough less is more here in my opinion and some of those wiped out areas kind of look like mid-tones again a little green's not going to hurt anything in this situation a little different than a landscape because it is so close you're painting something that's so close you know that that it's okay to have a little of that green in my opinion show through so anyway, I'll just play around here doing a few of these, a few of these little highlights, building up layer upon layer of the snow. And I think it's kind of pretty. And I really believe this is making a big impact here to the painting. If you overdo it, you could probably go easily back and, and put in your purples again. I'm sure the purples would eat up the white. With very little effort. Now I've got a thin down, slightly thin down color. I put just a little bit of, uh, in this case, I like walnut oil. I just put a little bit of walnut oil in there, just like you would a liner brush. Um, not much, just enough. Because I'm going over this bird, I think just a little bit more oil. I don't know. I don't want to create mud, you know, but uh, I also don't want, I don't want any problems sticking. I don't want a bunch of red, um, you know, evergreen branches, which is what would happen. There we go. Because I knew if I didn't do that, I was going to get it wrong. So again, you know, I, I'm just telling you how careful I'm being with this because I put a lot of work into this. I don't want to mess it up. And uh, yeah, anyway, a little bit of red. I know, like I said, I didn't want too much red, but it's not working out okay. You know, you could use a liner brush with this also if you wanted to. See this tail? Especially I knew I wanted to have some of that covered by these evergreen needles like so. Pretty, isn't it? Well, that wraps things up for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, Brushline, and also Patreon. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button, that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.